If we don't, <clears throat> excuse me, bore you tonight. Uh, with our thoughts, we just stick there, stick it out with us to the end. Try to keep you too late by the grace of God. So I have a few thoughts we'd like to share with you. The Lord has been impressing upon us. I'd like for you to turn your Bibles, if you would please, to 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter. 1 Corinthians, chapter 7. As we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the good prayer we were privileged to be in just a few moments ago, Lord. And we just want to acknowledge you as an individual that we need your help. We know, Lord, this is an audience that Father must face the devil down through the week. The enemy will be pressing and doing what he can to distract us and get us to go uh, in a direction that we ought not. So we're praying, Father, you rebuke the devil. Help each one, bless each one, Lord. May the words that we speak tonight find a place of permanent lodging and, and, and residence in each heart. Help, Lord, that we'll speak only that which would, Lord, glorify you. May we not get in the flesh, Lord, for as one was praying, what do we know? We're nothing, Father, but flesh and blood, and we just need help from heaven. Please undertake now and stir our hearts, challenge us, and we'll be obedient to the call and the word of God, and we'll praise you for Christ's sake. Amen. These thoughts have been on our heart that we trust they'll be a blessing to you. We know you've heard these things many times before, but we just feel like it's worthwhile being reminded, lest the devil take advantage of us. First Corinthians chapter. 7, I'll begin reading in verse number 30, it's 29, and I'll read through verse 31. But this I say, brethren, the time is short, and certainly if Paul felt that way, we know that it's shorter now than it was then when he wrote it. He said, this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remained that both they that have wives be as though they had none. And they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use this world as not abusing it. For the fashion of this world passes away. I'd like to focus our attention on the 31st verse. And they that use this world as not abusing it. And my subject tonight is abused by the world. I have, and I believe you do too if you're a Christian a desire to go to heaven. That's why I'm here. There's some other things that each one of us could be doing at this time, but if you have a vision and a true determination to go someplace other than this world, there's some sacrifices and some efforts that need to be made in order for you to reach your goal at the end. I have a desire to go to heaven. I have a desire to dwell there when this life is over. And I also have an understanding by the scriptures that there's a certain attitude and a particular viewpoint that you and I must take toward the world if we're to make it there. You know, we're living in this world and it seems so very real to us. This is all we've ever known since the moment that you came to an understanding of your surroundings and that which you were involved in. This is the only real world you've ever had contact with in a, to a long degree. Certainly if you've been saved, you've had contact with the other world, but I mean to, to go to heaven and see the splendors there where you've only heard about it, unless you've been one of those that has died and gone and seen the glories and come back. But. I don't think I'm talking to anyone like that here now. So the Apostle Paul here was speaking to the church and he said that the time is so grave and so important that we need to take a very grim viewpoint of the world and the possessions that we have and the things that are going on in this world. And keep in mind that we're only pilgrims. As one songwriter said, I'm just a passing through. And all that we get and all that we have is not really ours, but it's just given to our, us to be used until we leave here. As we were speaking earlier, you know what, it, it really is a thought to consider that all that you accumulate and all you get, somebody else will probably get it later on. 
I mean, some of the things that you have now, somebody else had at one time. Oh, you may have a new car. But, you know, in these days and times, some of the metal that goes into your car may have well been in somebody else's car that they recovered somewhere along the line. Some of the plastic pieces that you got may have already been used by someone else, and it just might be recycled. You might think your car is really new. Actually, your car is a recycled car. Somebody else probably had part of it at one time. And the person that probably had the car before you or parts of it is long gone. He never seen it in the new way it looks now. You're, you and I are very delighted to get the car. But a few years from now, it'll be old and somebody else might be driving it. I had occasion to be down near Brother Webb's house or at Brother Webb's house today and I saw a car. It didn't happen to be the one I used to have, but it looked very similar. When I looked at it, it brought back memories. I had that car back in the 70s. Back in 72, I looked at that car, I said, man, I look like, I thought to myself, I look like that old uh, Plymouth I used to have. You remember that car, brother? Yeah. That like the old Plymouth I used to have. It wasn't it, but it sure looked like it. But I have no idea where that car is now. Somebody could be driving it. Somebody could have restored it. It could have been gone to the pulverizer. Somebody pounded it down to a cube about the size of this podium here to be taken and melted down and used again. The point I'm trying to make with us this evening is that it is important for you and I to get a vision of what the world is really like, that it's only transitory. We can't stay here, and what we have we can't take with us. I want us to get that. I've been pondering it, and I want us to get that down in our hearts, that we can't take anything with us if we leave, not a thing, not a thing. I believe without fear of contradiction, I can say to you, that most people are being used by the world and are not using the world. You hear know what I'm saying? Most people are being taken advantage of by this world. Most people are being abused by the world. Most people are being drugged down by the world. The United States of America is a very opulent and fluent nation. In comparison to most people that you come in contact with from other countries, we're rich. No matter how much you, or how little you have, compared to most people, you're rich. Now, maybe perhaps compared to Kuwaitis and some of these other folks that have a lot, and some of them don't have much now, but because somebody else wanted more than they had it. But compared to most of the world, you and I are very rich people. Our standard of living is much higher than the general standing of the, standard of the world. There's only a few nations in all the world that have a higher standard of living than we do. And even those that don't have jobs, there's a way you can make money this is the land of opportunity we're just blessed things are wide open for us if you please and in that is also a danger and as a there's a red light that should be flashing that since we can get and afford thing we must be very careful what we do and how we do it so the devil doesn't take advantage of us when we go out you know it's it's really sad to watch people sometime on your job and such that they all almost have to raise their children on the telephone. They are working, maybe the women are the working and the man is working. And they're doing everything they can, Brother Kennedy, to provide for the children the finer things of life. And they are working and striving and struggling, sometimes working two and three jobs, some of them, to, to provide for them money and, and things and clothes and get the children what they want, what they desire. So they're not going to be like I was when I was young. I'm not, they're not coming up like I was. They're going to have these things. They're going to enjoy life where I was deprived. And they go through all these efforts and annex and acrobatics to get these things. And brother, when they get done, they raise rebels. The children are neglected. The children are what they call latch key. They, all they know is when they get home, they, there's, a, there's a key around their neck and they can turn and go inside and they'll watch television till the parents get home. Or, or perhaps have little boys or little girls sneaking in and doing things they got no business. Drinking, getting in their, getting in their, their drink and, and perhaps smoking cigarettes and other things that their parents would, would uh, have a fit if they knew they were doing, but because the parents aren't there to see it, then they're getting away with it. But I was blessed. I, I, I thank God for my mother. My mother was home when I was in school. Amen. Now, there may have been some things that we couldn't have because she was at home 
In fact, I know there was. If she had been working and she had a good job when she was there in Detroit, if she had been working, we could have had a lot more things. But I, I, I feel I'm much better blessed for her to have been home than for her to have been out in the workforce and me being able to have new bikes and all kind of clothing and everything else. Amen. See, we, we're missing the boat when we feel like we got to have everything. You hear what I'm saying? People are missing the boat when they feel like their children have to have everything or they, or they feel like they have to have. We don't have to have everything. God help us. God help me. We do not have to have everything. And if, we're, if there's something we desire to have, we should be willing to make sacrifices in order to get it and not try to stretch to get it. You know what I'm saying? Or we'll get ourselves in trouble, in trouble we may not be able to get out of. Amen. It's easy to get in trouble. It's harder to get out. It's better to stay out. Amen. Then we don't have to worry about trying to pray out. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Also, how often people are working and the spouses hardly know each other. Because she's working, he's working. And they don't even know each other. They're married singles, brother. They live in the same house. They live under the same roof. But they really have no relationship. Amen. They don't have any conversation with each other. They can't sit down and talk uh, or hold a decent conversation. I had a man tell me that one time. He said, I can't talk to my wife for more than a half hour. Now, maybe he was exaggerating, and maybe he wasn't. I, I had called my wife, and we were talking on the phone, and, and, uh, and he looked on my little bill there, and he said, man, you talking to your wife that long? He said, I can't talk to my wife more, more than half an hour. We probably could have talked longer, but you know how that is. <laughs> and I didn't, I mean, the time went by so fast. You know what I'm saying? But the point I'm making is this, that... In, in their effort, in people's effort to get things, they missing, they're missing the real meaning of life. The real meaning of life is to live for God and to have a wonderful life on earth without sinning, without corruption, and to die and go to heaven. Now that's the, that's the meaning of life. And whatever we get in the meantime, we're to use it to the glory of God and to nothing, no other end. If what I get or what you get cannot be used to the glory of God, we're better off without it. Amen. If it can't be used to the glory of God, then it's better off that we don't have it. Am I right? Amen. Amen. And whenever we go out and do something, we should have that in mind that whatever I do, however I'm getting myself involved in, it's some way I want God to get glory out of it. I want him to be able to use it to his glory. Amen. Amen. And it is important that we keep that in mind. I uh, am so thankful that God has had mercy on us and saved us when he did. Because had I stayed out there, my, 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 my conception of, of, of life was getting money and getting it fast and getting a lot of it. <laughs> I want money. I want it now. I want it fast. I want it easy. And I want a lot of it. And when you have that kind of mentality, there's not too many things you won't do to get it. And there was a lot of things I stooped to do to get it because that was the way I was thinking. But when God saved me, he changed that thinking. Amen. But now, there are some people that call themselves saved that are still thinking that way. Amen. I've seen some even among us that had the idea they're going to start their own business. And they went out there, they got going, they got started, they got, they got involved, and pretty soon, they weren't even saved anymore. I'm not against somebody starting a business, but I want to tell you something. I watched a relative of mine start a business. I don't know if I ever told you this story, but I'm going to tell you now. I watched him start his business. I watched him make his business grow, and I watched his family disintegrate while he was doing it. Amen. I watched him drive his van. I watched him drive his truck. I'd go over there and spend the night sometime, and what he'd do when he came home, he was so weary, so tired, that he'd just sit down and plop down and just stay in the chair and sleep. He was working every day on Saturdays and probably was on his mind on Sundays, even when he was at church, trying to get over it. Brother, having your own business is, is, is nice, but it's more than a notion. People think, I'm not going to have a boss if I have my own job. Yeah, you still got a boss. Amen. And if, you, and if you don't consider the government your boss, some of them folks might try to be your boss. Oh, yes. Amen. There'll be creditors that'll be after to, to be your boss. There'll be things that'll be coming against you that you can't even imagine right now. You'll be paying taxes. They say, when you, when, you, when you work for somebody else, something you don't even worry about, see? You don't worry about workman's comp. 
You don't even think about it. But if you're an employer, you got to think about it. So Social Security taxes don't even occur to you hardly. Well, you got to pay some. But if you're an employer, you got to pay them too. Some of those insurance costs when you got a job, oh, you don't worry about insurance. So some of you are fully provided, taken care of. But if you got a, a, a business, you got to take care of those people. So you got to negotiate. You got to go in and try to get the best rates. And you got to sit down and try to figure out who's going to be the carrier. Then you got to figure out who you, how much you can pay this one. And then if this one finds out you're paying him more than this one, then you got to worry about how you're going to compensate and this and that. Well, it's more than a notion. And, and, and you got to worry about, that's right, people stealing from you. You got to worry about being paid on time. You know what I'm saying? If you're rendering a service, you have to make sure that you you're collect the, at the time that you should be collecting. Amen. You got to worry about your own employees sometimes. You can't always get, I mean, everybody that you hire won't be just like you think they are when you sit across from at a table. They'll, they'll, they'll sit there and they'll smile and tell you, oh, I'll work for you and I'll do that. I'll break my back for you. And then they'll come in, man, and try to break your back. Amen. I watched, my, I watched this relative of mine. Yes, he, was, he, he, he had a, a grand business. And I respect him for that. I'm not, I'm not downing for that. I'm just saying, to me, it was more than a, a, a too great a sacrifice to make. That's what I'm saying. Now, for a saint, I would be very careful. If you want to start your own business, I'd be very careful. I'd be doing a lot of praying because you're not going to have a 40-hour week. You hear what I'm saying? If you're going to be an entrepreneur, you're not going to have a 40-hour week. You're going to have more than that. And you, and you better find a way, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you better find a way to give God his time or you're going to find yourself drying up and the world going to use you. All for the love of money, how many? have gone off and, and gone shipwreck. Amen. You know, it's one blessing, one wonderful blessing in being salaried like I am right now, is it doesn't matter. They don't pay me overtime. So there's no incentive, there's no desire there at all. I mean, I want to do my work, I want to get it done. And sometimes I do stay late, I do. And Sister Betty can attest to that. Sometimes I'm there later than I have to be. And brother, it's not because I'm trying to make money. It's trust come try. I got something to do. Amen. That's why I'm trying to do a good job. I'm trying to give the man his just, his dues. And I can't always get it done in the, in the time that I'd like to get it done. But brother, I'm so glad that there, that carrot's not sitting out there, man. Oh, man, OT. At one time, I can remember when I was working there, uh, man, it was getting good. I, was, I happened to be paid uh, overtime at the time. And man, man, they was piling it on me. And, and man, it was getting good. And, and I found myself getting to the place where I started counting on it. That's where that's the direction I was going, Sister Salih. I found myself, it was so constant that I found myself, I mean, factoring that in. That was part of my living, you know what I mean? And, and, and soon it dawned on me, what in the world am I doing? I'm going to get messed up. And just when I stopped, they stopped me. He said, Ron, won't be no more overtime. But I'm so glad that I, God had quickened me just a few moments, probably a message or somebody talked to me or something and, and, and brought to my realization the path that I was traveling. But see, the world will use you, I'm telling you. You can get used to that. Well, there's some people now, or some, some of you all jobs, you can, you can stand up and, tell, and, and, and you can attest to them that if they don't get overtime, they get mad. And the reason why they get mad is because they've already counted that into their budget. Amen. They've already, they've already set aside certain bills to be paid with that overtime. And if they don't get that, it's messed up. I know a gentleman right now, I'm going to call his name, but this gentleman lives so tight in life. The brother, it seemed like three or four dollars messes him up. I mean, he's living that close. I said, I can't imagine. I, I've never lived that close in life. I can't imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine living that tight. How, how does a person do that? Well, it's because they let the world use them. Amen. Lord, help us. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. May the Lord just show us how to manage our money and manage our time. Manage ourselves so we can make it to heaven when it's all over, right? Because like I said, all that we have as we, as we go through life, we're just passing through. When I was speaking to you this morning about people throwing things out, you know, and saying the junk. 
I've seen that happen. I wasn't making that up. We went over to somebody's house one time. A relative had died. And man, we looked at this stuff and said, this is junk. This is junk. But as far as this individual is concerned, this was life's treasures. Oh, mercy. We go over there and this individual will say, look at my couch. Look how, and it didn't look pretty from the outside. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. It was a nice looking couch. But when we went back and we got to looking at it, we pulled the thing up. Mice had been chewing on it. All down inside. But you couldn't see it when you were there, when you went over. There was a whole lot of other stuff there. Mo would just say, this is junk. Took that stuff and gave, us this, gave it to this one and that one and this group and that group. Get rid of this junk. Nobody wants it. But if that individual had been living, they'd have had a heart attack or a stroke or something if you had grabbed that stuff and called it junk. Because it was that important. But see, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. May God help us not to let these things get so important in our eyesight. See what I'm saying? Amen. To the place where if something happens to it, we find ourselves backsliding. Or we get all out of sorts. Or we quit coming to church. Or we get mad at all the saints. Or we throw a fit or tantrum. Or we blame God. Oh, Lord, help us. Amen. I read a story once about an African nation. I don't know where the nation is. But it's supposed to be a true story. It's a nation somewhere where every, or tri maybe it's a tribe, I'm not sure. But anyway, it's a, a group. And every seven years, they elect a, a, a new king. And at, at the end of the seven years, they kill the king they had. Now, let me explain something to you. They don't, the king is not killed because they take him out in the back and hang him. I knew that's what you think. But the king is killed because of the affluent life that he lives. In other words, he, he gets so much of his own way that at the end of seven years, they normally die. They say they give him so much that he has even the power of life and death. And they say for seven years, he can get anything he wants and everything he wants. So he eats like that man, that rich man, that you, how, do, how do you fare something every day? Every day. He has at his beck and call whatever, des whatever desires call for him. And they say at the end of seven years, they normally give up the ghosts. It kills them. And they say, even though all the other men in the, in the area know that's what's probably going to happen to them, say they don't lack for applicants. Huh? There's, there's somebody somewhere standing in the wings waiting to be elected knowing full well that the, the, uh, the, the, the odds are that at the end of seven years they'll be dead too. They're going to kill them. What's, what's, what's the point you're making? I'm telling you, my friend, if you got everything that you wanted sometime, it'd kill you. Some of us wouldn't last seven years. We, bet, we all be thankful that God don't, doesn't give us everything we want. If nothing else, it would kill us spiritually. Amen. You might live for a number of years, but spiritually you'd be dead as a doornail. Amen. You, 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 would, you, 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 you wouldn't have time to consume all that. Lord have mercy. Help us. Just think of it for a minute. Here this man would, be, would, would want to be elected. So that for seven years, just seven short years, brother, that's not long. Seven years can go by like that. But for seven years, he can enjoy everything. Oh, he's got supreme power. Women, whatever he wants, you know, at his beck and call. But at the end of about seven years, we got to do it all over again because this guy's getting ready to die. You know, killed his, that's right, he killed himself. The people have helped him and he has killed himself. You see how silly that is? I imagine that every time everyone comes up there, I imagine they think that somehow they're not going to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. They probably think, uh, I'm going to do different than, than Boo Lazy did. I'm going I'm to not do this and not do that. Yeah. 
See what I'm saying? Now, I know it kills so and so. I'm not going to do that. About seven years later, though, they're burying him, carting him off, carting him off. Brother, it, it shows, it just shows you how when people get infatuated with the world, there's some things that, that don't mean much. Life itself may not mean much if they can get what they want and enjoy it for that time. I read once about a man that was a, a very rich man, and he said he'd give his millions if he could just digest his food. <laughs> That's right, bro. He said, he, he can't eat. He said, I'd gladly, I'd gladly give you all my millions if I could just digest my food now. <laughs> but I can't, I can't eat. One man, one man, a millionaire, you know, I've been reading about these folks. So one, one, man, one man said he, he starved to death on his feet. He had millions of dollars, but he couldn't eat. He had a condition in his body, he couldn't eat. So all his money, he said, he, he, they said he, he'd give parties and people would come in and they'd just feast and everything else, but he couldn't eat. And he died of starvation while he was on his feet because he could not eat. The world will use you up, I'm telling you. And it's deceptive, you see. You got plastic money, you can throw the card down, pow. Man, the thing going choo choo. You're not, but now, you can go down to Myers and you can take the card out yourself, can't you? And run it through the little thing. You don't even have to wait for the person. You just run it through yourself. So what is this? What's next? Shell station. You don't have to go inside now. You just go out there and run your car through. Get, get back in your car and go on home. I said, what's next? So you get them plastic cards. We have to be careful with them. Amen. We've heard about master charge mastering us. Visa and all the other. Discovery and Sears and whatever else you have. Man, I've seen people with two or three Visa cards. Two or three MasterCards. I, I can't understand it. It's American Express. And this and that. What do you need with all them cards for? A man told me he had $18,000. $18,000 were for credit cards. $18,000. Eighteen, <laughs> And this is not a rich man. Uh, 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 not, you know, I'm not talking about Rockefeller. $18,000 worth of credit cards, brother. $18,000. Lord have mercy. At 21% or whatever. I don't, I know he wasn't necessarily saying he'd charge it all up. Now, I'm not, I want to put, put him in a bad light. Yeah, when he, if he, had, if he had to take them all and charge them all up, he could have $18,000 of stuff. I can't imagine that. <laughs> $18,000, man, keep that. But folks send you, when they send those things to your house, you know what to do with them? When they send you them little letters? Say, oh, we'll give you the gold card. Oh, you have been selected. You know how they, you are one of our preferred customers. You are pre-approved. Due to your excellent credit rating, we thought that you would be really delighted in our sending you our special gold card. As you got a $3,000 limit, and every year you only pay us a small fee of $35, and this card can be yours. Just fill out the side at the bottom and send it back in. No application in anything else. Put it in the garbage. Listen, you got enough sense to go down and get one if you want it, right? You better be careful don't get too many. Amen. How often, how often? Amen. Colossians chapter 2. Let me read you a couple more verses and I'm going to sit down here. Lord willing. Colossians chapter 2, verse 20. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to, its, to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, handle not, which, are, which all are to perish with the using after the commandments and doctrines of men. Now, I know that the, the subject here is not what we're talking about, but the principle is the same. This world is perishing without using it. 
when you get in that car, that car, every time you drive it, it's perishing. You understand what I'm saying? And so are you, and so am I. Every time we use these things, they're getting a little more wear and tear on them. They normally don't get better with use. They get weaker, right? No matter how, how good they were at the beginning, they're not going to be as good by the time you get done with it. So keep that in mind. That what you have in your possession is to be used to God's glory. And do that. And God will bless you for it. But don't let the world take advantage of you. Don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Amen. Amen. Be better off to save some money up and, and buy it and get it over with than to try to keep up than go out and charge it and be struggling for the next six years. And be all dry and have to work every overtime they ask for. Oh, Lord, help us, help us, Jesus, please. Every time they call, you got to go. You can't, you can't afford. I can't afford to turn it down. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. You all season people, man. They crank overtime like you wouldn't believe. And I said, look, I'm gone. I'm going home. I'm going to see my wife and family. I got a life outside of this place, okay? Now, you might not. This might be your great escape. Huh? Because you all don't get along no way. See what I'm saying? You're not saved, you're not saved, you all don't get along. But I'm going home. I got a place of refuge. I got not only a house, I have a home. Amen. 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 And so I'm going home. Bye. <laughs> and we need to be able to say that. But look, Amen. See, see, the devil would like to put this, get us in a position where we're so caught up and so tied up that we can't do what we're supposed to do as far as God's concerned. And he'll do it if he can. Now, he may not be able to get you to smoke and drink. He may I get you out on the dance floor. He may I get you to card parties and sniffing drugs or whatever. But he sure would like to get you overcharged. Oh, Lord, help us. And you know, of all the things out there, that's one of the worst things we can ha let happen to us is get overcharged. It's very hard on your soul and your spirit. So he said, these things perish with using. Whatever we get going to perish as we use it, right? So we best use it to the glory of God. And if we can use it to God's glory and God can get the praise out of it, then that's what it's all about, right? 1 John 2. Very familiar verse of scripture for those that have been around for a while. Let's read it. You know it, <clears throat> excuse me, by heart, some of you. Love not the world, 15. Neither the things that are in the world. Now he said don't love the world. He said don't love the stuff in it. <laughs> Oh, Lord. There's some beautiful automobiles out there on the road. But, but folks are sure in love with their cars. Oh, mercy. I watch them sometime where I work on the parking lot. You can tell who really, I mean, people that are really, really concerned. I'm not saying that that's, this is wrong, but I'm saying there are some people that you can tell that are really, really concerned about their car. Because we got a pretty big parking lot. And you'll see them park way over in the corner. And not just parked in line, but they'll park at a slant so that you can't get your car next to their car. Hey Amen. And you go out there and you drive by and you say, look at this. Now, I'm not saying people should be getting out and bumping folks' cars and putting dings and dents in them. That's not right either. But I'm saying, Mercy. Don't make the car your God, or your house your God, or your job your God, or money your God, or your furniture your God, or any of that. Here, God is to be God, and not these things. Amen. And some people, if you open their closet, you, you would see a closet full of clothes, and shoes galore. And then they say, I don't have anything to wear. I don't, have, I don't have anything to wear today. You don't have anything to wear? You don't have anything to wear? <laughs> oh, you ought to hear them. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It's really something. People, people spend their money on these things, and when they get finished, what do they have really to show for? Nothing, brother. Nothing. It's all worn out in a few short years. Nothing to show for. But saints, Jesus told us this. And I mean, I quoted just right, but nevertheless, he said, these things are what the Gentiles seek after, right? He said, there's some things that, and when he speaks of Gentiles, he's talking about the world in general. He said, these are some things that the world seeks after. 
He said, don't be like that. Lord, help us not to be like that. And we can make it to heaven if we really want to go. There's a, a law that you and I are familiar with known as gravity. You've heard of it, right? And it is, it is said or has been said that the, a man that could carry a, a, a sack of grain on earth could probably carry about six times that much on the moon because the moon is smaller. And so the gravi gravitational pull is not as great. So if you took that same man and put him on a, on an, on a, uh, 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 earth, if earth was as large as the sun, that's what I'm trying to say, uh, he, would, he would have a time trying to take his watch off. So it would probably, the watch would probably take about, weigh about five or six pounds. Because of the size, there's a greater pull. You still with me? All right, now if he's on the moon, the moon's smaller than the earth, so the gravitational pull would be smaller, so he could, he could carry more. He'd be lighter, things would be lighter to him. He said, but if you had, the, if the earth was the size of the sun, he said your watch would be probably about five or six pounds. Yeah, it'd be a big burden to you. In fact, it said that if you laid down, you'd never get up again. You wouldn't have the strength to get back up. So what's the, what's the moral of all that? That's interesting. What's the moral of it? The bigger your world is to you, the heavier your burden. If you see the world as being all important, it's just like the sun to you. That's why y'all burden and weighed down. Amen. That's why y'all burden and weighed down. That's why things are so heavy to you. Even the smallest thing is going to be hard for you. Because the world's so big in your sight. That every little thing is big to you. But those that have the, have the world about the size of a marble, which is about where we need to have it. <laughs> Amen. Brother, that's right. We're free as a bird. You can be free as a bird. If I get it okay, if I don't, okay. Praise God, I'm saved. Hallelujah. Amen. If it works out all right, if it don't work out, fine. Praise God, I'm going to be happy. Glory. That's what you need. You need to see it. You need to see it like a marble. Come on. It doesn't need to be all encompassing in your vision. You don't need to see the world as everything. Come on. You need to see it like nothing. That I'm leaving here. The gray hairs are sprouting. And I can't run like I used to. Can't hop like I used to. In fact, don't even feel like trying to do it sometimes. See what I'm saying? I got to go. And when you get that vision, brother, then some of these things will be pretty light to you. Some of your burdens will, be, will lighten up because you realize, man, I don't have to bear this but a few short years and then I'm gone. I'm out of here. Well, let me, let, me, let me read these few more verses to you. This is my last verse, wasn't it? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's a strong statement. He did not say, or did not miss words. He said, if you love the world, he said, you can't love God too. Can't be spiritual. That's what he's saying. So you can't be world and be spiritual at the same time. You can't be in love with God and be in love with this world. And the world passes away. That's what Paul said, didn't he? He said, these things Paris was using, didn't he say that? He said the fashion of the world passes away over in Corinthians. He said the, lust the, he said the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. We trust these few words have been a blessing to you. Remember, amen, we got to leave here. That you are called a pilgrim and a sojourner. And your life will soon be over. And you'll be off in eternity. And only what's done for the master will be important. As we stand. Um, used by the world. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat>